Hello everybody, this is Adam Troy. I want to do a quick little review discussion on the Roland TM2, one of my favorite pieces of gear that I've bought over the last year. On there right now happens to be one of my favorite patches, Electric Toms, yeah! But anyways, this thing is wonderful. I used it both in studio and at home. Uh, you know, layering sounds, but also getting the MIDI for later production in case I need to do any kind of drum replacement, tightening the kick and snare, which is usually what I do. I like to layer my kick and snares, or as you know out there, you're usually replacing the kicks anyways. So this thing is just flawless, works flawlessly, especially with the Roland RT30 triggers. I happen to have the HR on the snare, I have the same one dual trigger on the first tom and then single triggers on the other ones. I don't have them on the floor toms at the moment just because I was moving these things around. I brought those in the studio just recently, just those two toms. But absolutely flawless and the kick trigger is right down there. Sometimes I'll have it a little bit lower, but it gets a little close to the pedals down there. So. Um, one thing that I've discovered with the triggers and the module is to try to keep the heads uh, from not vibrating too much. And that Remo head on there with the pinstripe stuff works perfectly. And of course the big old teddy bear in there works nice. And that is a Ludwig vintage 70s Vista Light that's down there. This is a DW acrylic design series, five inch. Now one of the weird things with this trigger, just so I mention it, is that I have difficulty getting this in the right spot on the DW hoops. So you would think that, hey Adam, why don't you put it up there, right? You know, that makes more sense. It's out of the way. Well, I can't get it up there. It won't stay on there. And this is one of the spots that it goes on. I look, the rims are perfectly, the hoops are, I mean, fine, everything on there. Um, but it just, for whatever reason, it's like certain places on that hoop. I haven't tried it with any other DW um, hoops or toms or snares or anything like that. It might just be a fluke with this one that I have, but it is kind of a bizarre thing. It fits perfectly, drops right in on the pearl stuff without a problem and the kick. And see the key is getting that cone down there to sit real solid on top of that snare. That's what's so important about that. So this TM2 is phenomenal. The kick and snare just respond perfectly on it. Um, what I did is I take the MIDI right out into the computer at the same time and get the audio. Uh, and um, actually I didn't even have any problems uh, with being unbalanced. Of course I went into a direct box with this, but um, absolutely fantastic sound. No buzzing, nothing going on. This also runs on batteries which is pretty handy, in case you don't have power there. Really, really, really great module. I didn't have a chance to put any samples in there. I figured maybe if uh, after this last album or project I happen to be touring with this, that I might have to put some of the drum sounds in there. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, what I'll do, if I keep this, what I'll do is probably use this as an effects thing or just use the four triggers on the toms to get whatever kind of sound I want out of those or to add something to it because what's cool about this is you only have two trigger inputs but they are TRS or stereo so they can split out and of course the kick is going to be a single trigger anyways but the snare obviously you want a dual trigger but if you go with just all the toms you can split that out and have four triggers going into it and then of course you got to go in the TM2 and set that up um, it'd be really cool if Roland had some software that you could get in there and tweak things with the software on the computer and whatnot be a little bit faster because it is a little cumbersome with just a few little buttons and whatnot to get around and edit but once you have things set up and working because it works so well just by itself but once you get the sounds and everything tweaked the way you want it uh, it's perfect and I highly recommend using the Roland triggers with this because it is flawless I have tried using some other triggers and I've tried using some of my old pads from the 80s. Those are Pearl TP1s. I have Tama Tech Stars as well. You can see in another video. Maybe I'll throw some pictures up for you. But um, it just, they never trigger right. Even if you go in the TM2 and you change the pad, the settings, the sensitivity, the threshold, all that kind of stuff, you still just can't get those darn 
old pads to respond properly. But when you use those RT triggers, it's just phenomenal. It's almost like you have a mesh hat on, head on there. Just using a regular V drum or TD50 uh, set or something. It's great. Now, why am I talking about this? Because I think it's so great. It's one of my favorite pieces I've had in a long time. But it just may go away because of the new stuff I have coming in. I have a Roland SPD30 coming in, and I can use the kick and snare out of that already. Um, it has additional pads in there, inputs, which would cover this whole thing in here. So it may go away. I might not need it, or I'll just use this on Tom's while I use that for some other things. Hard to say at this point, but, you know, for simplicity, if you can have everything in one module, doing everything, it's even better. I had considered the TM6 as well as a possibility, but um, the SPD30, I think, is going to be really cool on that. We'll be arriving in a couple days, and I hope to do some videos on that as well. I hope this helps all of you, but I can't say enough about the TM2. Highly, highly recommended. And, you know, I've been doing this for years and years and years, and I go back to the TD5, and they're all triggering stuff with making hybrid kits and everything, and this is definitely the best thing I have ever worked with. I'll just hit a couple things so you can see it trigger. Just with my hand.